Hi there, my name is Kendrick, and today I get to have Chinzia back. So Chinzia, welcome. Hi, everyone. Uh, Chinzia, can you tell everyone your full type again? Yes. So I am an ENFP jumper, so which means I am M um, MF, so audio, N-E-T-E, -E, play, consume, sleep, bla sleep, blast. And social type is still up for debate. Okay, gotcha. And we'll discuss that as we go along with today's interview. Um, so, Chinzia, so since we last spoke, um, not, not those panel interviews, but like just the one-on-one, -on -one, I think that was like three years ago or something. It must have um, been, yeah. What has your journey been like practicing that S-I-T-E blast last? Because that that one is the one that like really gets you. I remember you got triggered actually during our interview when we Did were I? Yeah, like you even made a video like how your ST blast wasn't it wasn't coming. Yeah, I remember. Up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, it's true. Um, well, Actually, I've been thinking about that for a few days, ever since I knew that I was going to do this interview. And I thought, well, how could I present that in all of the things that are going on in my mind in an organized manner, blast style, right? And I thought um, we could actually look at it from the point of view of the competence model. The, I think you might know what, what I mean. I think Dave has already talked about it in, in the past. It's basically the four stages of competence where you have the lowest level is the unconscious incompetence where you don't know that you don't have a skill and you're really unaware that you really suck at it and then the next level up would be conscious incompetence where you are aware that you don't know how to do it um, but you still can't do it and then there's conscious competence where you can do it but it's it's taking a lot of effort and then there's unconscious competence where you do something so easily that it becomes second nature and i've been thinking about that along those lines and i think you can really use that model to to kind of look at my um, progress in terms of my typing. And I think before I got typed, I definitely was on the first level. So I didn't really know what Blast was. I thought, I actually thought I was Blast Savior or some, so something, which makes absolutely no sense um, because I thought I can get shit done, but turns out that was just my play. And so I definitely was on the unconscious incompetence side. And obviously the typing, got me to the next level saying, well, okay, I know that I'm lacking there and I, I can't do anything against about it. And I think over the past three years, I haven't really been working actively on my blast, but I think what has happened is I have really um, lost a lot of resistance to the blast because I can see the, how, how good it is and how relevant it is and how necessary it sometimes is and how the lack of blast is annoying to others. And so that has really helped me get from, I would say, from the second level, um, so from the in, from the conscious incompetence to even sometimes to conscious competence on some in some aspects of blast. So I would say um, I'm still not really good when it comes to teaching the tribe because that goes so against my nature. I really, I when I look at myself, whenever I feel like I'm teaching someone, it's usually just play. It's usually just I'm showing someone something, but I'm not teaching them. I'm just showing and sharing the information and hoping that they'll pick it up. <laughs> um, but I think I have made a lot of progress when it comes to the aspect of Blast that, that has to do with getting started instead of procrastinating. And I think a good example is this interview, actually, because when you asked me to do the interview, I thought... My first instinct was, oh, my God, no, I can't do it because I'm not ready. <laughs> and I thought, well, how ironic would it be to turn down a request for an interview on Blast Last saying that you're not ready <laughs> because you're Blast Last. And then I thought, OK, this is my opportunity to prove that I'm not a bullshitter. And so I just said, well, let's just do it and let's do it in two days and not in two months, because my first instinct would have been to push it back as far as I can because I didn't want to think about it. So I think I'm making some progress, but I'm definitely not uh, anywhere near Zen state. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. That's so good. Like you you went opposite of like your natural inclination and you just went for like the blast, the actual blast, which is, uh, you know, doing it in two days. I also love the competency model that you mentioned. Um, I completely forgot about that. It's like been so long since I heard about that. So like the fact that you brought it up, I, it kind of made me think, I'm like, oh my God, you're totally right. 
like I think OPS really brings people from unconscious incompetence to conscious competence. And I think that goes a long way because if you don't know that you have a problem on something, then how can you fix it, right? So Certainly. just like, having that awareness goes like a long way because like a lot of people now know what their last animal is. They're like, oh my God, this is my problem. And this is how I'm causing problems for everyone else. And then, you know, it's it's just nice to um, finally work on it. And I thought when you blasted that competence model, that, that was blast. You did it. That, that's actually that blasting. Blast, right? Yeah, that, that was blast. <laughs> I was like, oh, sweet. You're actually blasting. Um, you, You're doing um play blast. So you're like, so you do you did a you did a blast with a uh, conscious competence or the competence model, and then you added some play in between, uh, mm-hmm. which is fine. Actually, that's actually a better blast than just pure blast because I think pure blast is boring. You know, with a play, you kind of like taking the the audience with you, right? So, mm-hmm. um, but I also thought it was funny when you mentioned that uh, you weren't using blast before; you were using play. Um, and like, I think that the funny thing about the reality is like you can get away with just using play instead of blast, but it's not like it's it's kind of like confusing sometimes because it's not organized you yeah. know so if you're it's true yeah but I wanna... goes... sorry go ahead sorry. no i was gonna say it just um is in line with someone said in one of the live streams where he said um sometimes we think we're doing our our, sa- our, our demons but we're actually just doing our saviors once again and it's just trick your mind is just tricking you <laughs> right right exactly um and I can relate to that because sometimes I think I'm doing sleep processing when I'm actually just using play to myself. Um, so I did want to ask you about the blasting. Um, do you feel like when it comes to blasting to people, is there like a part of you that, because you're a uh, tribe of self, that you need permission before you can blast to someone? Like it's kind of like, like it could potentially be annoying to to blast. Yes. Like you need permission first. Yeah, I watched the um, the last live show that Shan did, and she had a, a slide where she where there was a, a slide on tips for blast last. They, she did all the animals, but one of them, uh, the tips said, you will stop feeling like you're taking up too much time and stop feeling that you're annoying the tribe by blasting at them. And that is completely how I feel. I always feel like I'm talking too much. I always feel like I'm taking up too much space in, in the arena. Um, and I think sometimes that, that can be true because when I talk, I do the escape talk with the blah, 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 which doesn't make any sense. And so maybe that's where it's coming from because <laughs> the play talk really is annoying to to listen to. Um, but at the same time, I don't talk a lot. So maybe I should just give myself permission to to talk more. That's that's definitely true. Um, and I think that's some, some area where OP has really helped me as well because OP, I think the biggest achievement that I had from the, the typing was really to that it helped me uh, distinguish between my subjective feeling and objective truth, if you will. So, for example, knowing that I'm blast last, I can now understand a lot of my feelings, uh, like the feeling that I'm never ready or the feeling that I feel like I'm taking up too much space uh, in the blast arena. I, and I think that feeling is right and it's it's valid and it's there it's not it's not not there it's not I don't imagine it but at the same time I can now understand that this is just my subjective feeling and it's not true and that this gives me permission to overcome it and to ignore it so to speak because I know that it's just mental junk in a way do you know what I mean the um so the the insight that OP has given me really helps me overcome my my wrong instincts in a way right gotcha um, I don't know if it's wrong instinct, but like maybe the instinct, instinct that's not serving you anymore, something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but um, I'm I am curious though, um, because of your animal stack. So I'm play blast and then consume sleep, right? So it's kind of easy easier for me to get to my sleep animal because even though it's last, because I go to full extroversion and then I swing to full introversion, right? So it it has like an easier transition and like people that I've interviewed who's like a crackhead that we can transition to mope um, more easily. And even the mopes, they can transition to crackhead because it's like they're together, right? Yours is a little bit more challenging because you're play consume and then your transition is sleep blast. Like then you become Dave then? Is that is that like what happens? Like you become more like a the douchebag archetype, whatever. <laughs> like, like, you know, teaching people about the stuff that is that you've already processed inside. Like how does... Like, have you ever been in that situation where you you did swing um, to the sleep blast or has I, that, that never happened? 
I think there's a number of things that's happening. So whenever I have to blast, so for example, if at work I have to give a presentation, that's really important. I will do all the other animals first. So I'll do the play, consume, I'll sleep on it, and then I'll do the blast. And usually then, because I've done all my animals, I usually, my presentations are really good and people tell me, oh, you do really good presentations, you can really speak. And I think, I'm thinking, well, that's just because I've done all the other animals. But what I have noticed is that whenever I do give a speech or whenever I give a talk or a presentation, I am very um, energy dominant or very not info dominant in a way that I, I will then blast all the shit at you for half an hour without ever checking back, without ever doing the ping back that you info doms do. Uh, yeah, infodoms, because the infodoms will do a little bit of blast, a little bit of a consume, a little bit of blast, a little bit of consume. And when I'm in blast mode, I can go keep going for an hour and never check in with the tribe because it's so uncomfortable for me. And I feel like that's that might be the swing that, you, that you're referring to, because once I'm in the blast, um, then it's really just hard to to go back to sleep consume in a way if you if you know what I mean I'm not sure if I I haven't oh done. I see what you mean but it's it's like um it's like a one way blast once I get to my yeah. blast I will have to I will probably do such a one way blast because I just want to get it done and over with whereas you I can imagine you can and you can see it in your interviews you can much you can do the back and forth much better than than I can um. Because you've got the two info, don't, the info animals in the top three, um, and for me, once I get to my blast, it's all blast and no consume anymore because I just want to get it over with. <laughs> uh, would you say you're doing that when you do get to your blast? Because it's so hard for you to get to your blast that if you get interrupted part way, you're going to lose your train of thought and the organization goes away, and you can really only hold that organization for a short period of time it's kind of like you know when you're going to school when you're younger and you're cramming for an exam and you can only hold those information for a short term before it goes away maybe. after the exam you don't remember anything anymore right you know maybe like and and probably because if I have to blast I have to do the sleep first and I can blast what I slept on first right but if you if I do then if I, if I then do the, the ping back with you and you throw me another question that I haven't been able to think about I can't blast on the spot so <laughs> I think that's that might be what, what's going on unconsciously I do not want the ping back while I'm blasting because if I have to take in um, what I'm blasting about and I have to take in new stuff and blast about the new stuff on the spot that's really difficult for me because if I have to talk about something on the spot I will always talk through my play and it's never going to be nice and neat blast it's always going to be the play energy thing that i'm doing right now <laughs> the chaos chaos talk yeah okay. i mean the good thing about the chaos talk is it, it is um entertaining like like people like play so it's 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 more energizing because you're involving the tribe so it's not like a bad thing per se um i think it i think that play consume or consume play sleep blast is only bad if you get to that point where like you know that video that one that you hate the most Imogen Heap oh god yeah yeah I know that like because I think maybe you felt like maybe that was you or something um that which, traumatized me yeah <laughs> and then I was like oh my god and then and then I did notice that sometimes I do interview people who have that stack like play consume sleep blast or consume play sleep blast and I think they're finished talking and then they keep going and I'm like are you are you gonna get it to the point like what are you what are you I, trying to say here? Like can, can we have a conclusion? You know? I think about her a lot, a lot, a lot because I sometimes sound like that because she's basically me. Just she's double feminine and I'm um, audio. And that class I think about her so much because it made me the first time. That was the first time that I really realized just how annoying it is to listen to someone who has this kind of talk, and it's just it doesn't it's just unbearable. And I think that was a major moment for me that where I thought, okay, I can see why Blast is good. It's not just bullshit and giving lessons on something that you don't know anything about. It's really also just communicating in a way that people can actually listen to. And that that was a major turning point for me. Even, I mean, even though I'm still not very good at it, but it's it's um, it's been important. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit opposite though when I interview people who are like Blast Sleep or Sleep Blast Play Consume where they'll give me an answer and it's super concise. And then I'm like, okay, we have an hour and you've already answered everything so concisely. Like everything I was going to ask, you've already kind of like shove it in, in a small box. And then I'm like, 
ah, I gotta fill the, the rest of the time slot with some some play bullshit now, you know. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, all the animals are good and good and bad in this at the same time. It's, you need a balance of all of them. So it's yeah. It's, it's well, the balance. good the good thing about those guys though is, um, I don't have to try to dig to get the answer from this person. Because they've already answered everything, which is which is I always I do appreciate. But sometimes with the blast last, uh, I'm like, okay, I need to get the answer for you. Can you can you keep talking? Can you like you do know not ask yes no questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially it's harder for the consume sleeps obviously, or the sleep consumes play blast. Yeah. But like, yes, yeah, because at least the lead plays will talk. You know, even if they're going in circles, at least they're talking. That's true. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay, that's cool. Let's. So I, you know what? From what I can see though, Chinza, you are improving in your blast. I mean. I think the thing with blasting or like with using your last animal, it's like 1% every day, right? Or even less than that. And, you know, your goal is just to get a little bit of improvement every year. And, you know, it's like Dave and Shan says, you just need to get a passing grade. You're never going to be the best at your last animal, but it should be like at least 80, 20. Like, I think that's like the rule or at least you that's get true. You do it enough where you don't um, affect the tribe with that's true. you not doing it. And now uh, one last thing before you, um, I think you, you want to say something, but like, let me ask. That's one. Fine. Okay, let me just add one last thing. Um, I also think that um, those who are blast last, I think the tribe do does want you to blast because like that's what you're that's what you're missing, right? Like um, like my girlfriend for example, she's blast last. <clears throat> I can tell when we're in any any uh, group scenario because um, me and her we both work in the same place for a part time job, like just like our side hobby job. We both work in a fitness center. Like my girlfriend's also a personal trainer and, you know, she teaches like um, senior fitness and all that stuff too. So um, I do notice that the when she does get to blasting, everyone pays attention because she's so, usually she's just, I wouldn't say she's quiet, she just, but she's just using play, but she doesn't teach you anything. But when she actually teaches you something, she does know what she's talking about. And then it's kind of like, good. so a lot of people who are blast last, they, they, they know a lot of stuff. The problems they they have trouble organizing it to teach the tribe. So and so the the ones who do get to the point where they do start blasting, like um that that dude the ESTP um blast last uh, um what's his name again in the class uh the the entrepreneur guy I forgot his name I'm so bad with names because I'm a Hermosi Hermoso Hermoso yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah Hermosi guy okay. Alex Hermosi yeah uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah his blast is good and his blast last. Yeah. So, that's because it's gone all, through all the other animals, I think. Because once you get to your last animal, you you're in a sense state, you're in the master state, as in you've done all the other animals, and so you're really firing on all that engines. That's why it's so good. But I'm, I'm sure it's the same for you with sleep. If you if you um, do sleep, it's going to be very good because you've you've done all your other other animals in the first place. Yeah, for sure. Um... We'll talk about that later. Let's finish the social type and then we'll we'll, we'll have this discussion back and forth. Okay. I'll talk about my sleep also. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to social type then. Um, so right now it's unknown, although I did see you once mention that you might think you're a number one. Uh, so let's start with that before we go over the cross check. So are you still leaning towards number one as your social type, or do you feel like it's something else? Um I think <laughs> See, I think it's. I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I'm. I'm really curious what you think, but I think that's the one that I can see that that makes the most sense, really, by through just by elimination of all the others. Um, but I have considered all of them, and I'm still considering all of them because uh, it's. It's. <laughs> I kind of feel like when I first saw all of these t types, I watched all the videos. I thought, oh, okay, number one resonates the most with me, and I thought, oh, okay that must mean that I'm a number four because I'm typing myself upside down. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm a number four. And I tried that on for a few days and I thought, well, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever because what I do know is that I have um, an, an incredible drive. Like just compared to other people, I really have an intensity in my what I want to achieve. So I thought maybe I have a responsibility. And then I thought maybe it was a flex or friends. And it's just just through comparing myself to others i think number one still makes the most sense but sometimes i see i'm I'm really not really sure to be honest <laughs> but maybe that's just my my demon or why not wanted to conclude or something <laughs> maybe um i remember you used to do competitive powerlifting is that what you were doing yeah are you still doing still that? doing yeah 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 okay um, um and then like do you relate to what 
the description is for number one, where you want to crush everyone during that this kind of competition? I kind of do. So, see, that's why I'm confused because when I just looking at myself, I have that com- I have that urge to be at the top of this mountain, and but at the same time, I know that I won't be a world champion in this sport because I uh, first of all, my genetics are probably not the best, and then I started very late in uh, in life. But then the next thing that I, so I know that I will never be the world champion in the open category. But then I thought, hey, uh, once I turn 40, I can start in the master's division. And the master's division right now in my country is really just very empty. There's not, not, not a lot of people around. So, I, so I'm thinking I can be the best in that category. Um, but the thing that confuses me a little bit is whenever they talk about number one uh, celebrities, these celebrities always make those disclaimers openly on their Instagram, for example, they would say, oh, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to beat you all. I'm going to, you don't even know what's coming at this competition. I'm going to be so strong. And that's not something I do. That's something I think. Um, But I would never say that out in the open. And my reasoning is that I, if I'm thinking, if I'm telling the world that I want to win, and if I then don't win then everyone's going to know and I'm going to be looking like a loser and I don't want to look like a loser so I'm not telling them that I want to win but I do want to win and if I see the chance for me um, to win I will absolutely crush everybody else and go for the win I will never um, that sounds awful <laughs> but I will never sacrifice my own happiness for others I guess and that's another cross check that I'm doing so I'm thinking maybe the reason why I'm so confused is that I have a lot of coins in my so in my OP type that make me friendly. So I'm a double decider, which means I can get along with people just well. I feel friendly. I feel I have no problems with uh, with people, and I'm a DE, which makes me a, a people pleaser. But at the same time, I feel that inner conflict where I realize that while I do want to be a people pleaser, I want to help people. I can only help someone if they have a goal that's not the same goal as mine. So if they're playing a different sport, for example, or if they have the same goal, but they are so much lower on the hierarchy than I am that they're not, then they're not a threat to me. So if someone, so say if you came to me and you said, I want to be the best YouTuber uh, on the internet, I would be so happy to help you because that's not my goal. I don't want to be a YouTuber, but I can do everything I can to help you become one. Um, but if someone came to me and said, well, look, um, I want to be a power lifter. <laughs> Can you help me become a good power lifter? I think I would only be able to genuinely help them if they were in a different category or if their numbers were so much lower than mine that I wouldn't think that they would be a threat to me. So, But I would never say that out in the open. So that's that's where I'm getting confused a little. So I'm not sure. Oh, my God. That sounds like number one. I, I have a friend um, who me and my other friends think is a number one because I, I I do talk about like the social type of my friends because social type I think you, you can self-type that it's not like um you know your OPS code where your last animal is actually a blind spot with with a social type I think most people are aware like kind of like your sexual modalities too I think David Chan also said that sexual modalities and sure. um uh, social type most people can self-type and it's not a it's not a big yeah. deal because like it's kind of obvious right um, and I actually, and I actually did some cross checks with watching interviews with where you di- uh, interviewed people. I watched one where you interviewed um, an ESFP male who was a number four, and then Annie, who's a number three, and then um, the British woman the therapist who's a number one. Um, what's he called? Mary or something? No. Maria. I can't remember. Maria. Yeah. Yeah. And when I watched that interview, 90% of what she said could have come out of my mouth. And I was thinking, she gets me. <laughs> 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 yeah and <laughs> you're both some EP differences also. <laughs> sorry you're both an ep also yeah yeah but there were some differences but i think the differences came from her being a di and me being a de um because she said something like i'm more drawn or more comfortable with number fours than number twos because number two stress me out because their responsibility and my responsibility clash and i think i'm very comfortable with number twos because if the number two's responsibility takes over, then my DE can go along and it's just easier to not always have to follow my DI and my responsibility. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? Well, that makes sense, yeah. Um, um, but but what you said about your description about um, you potentially being number one and how you see competition and helping other people and whatnot. I have a friend, I think he's an ESFJ. Uh, I think he's Blast Play, Sleep Consume, MF. Um, and that behavior that you described 
is him. Because like me and my friends, um, I have this friend who, if you're doing good, he looks unhappy. He looks very unhappy. And and then we're like, this guy's fucked up. Like, like he, he like when his friends are succeeding, he doesn't look happy at all. Um, and then um, so he'll only help you if you're absolutely like so below him that like you're not even close to catching up. Like so he'll he'll be more than happy to help you because he's also DE, right? Um it sounds the, moment, so bad. The, the moment you get close, his attitude changes a lot. Like he really starts like looking at you in a resentful way almost. And then um and uh but like if it's in a different um uh, industry, like for example, he's he's in finance, right? So if you're doing something, he's into finance and entrepreneurship. So if you're doing like I have another friend, he's into like outdoors and camping. Well, he doesn't give a shit about that. So of course he he doesn't feel any threat when it comes to that area. Um and uh because he's also DE, it's kind of also funny because I have a friend, he's a number four, but he has the success level of a number one. Um because mm-hmm. he's already he's like a self-made millionaire and he got he honestly it's part of his luck, part of its skill. Um, because he married this girl who um who's like a number one she's an intp i think like consume last sleep last play consume last i think and then so um they're in the fashion industry and she's like i'm gonna crush all these bitches like she's always looking at instagram looking at other girls and she's like and she'll like show my friend the pictures of this girl she's like let this be the motivation for you to succeed because she's saying those those her her quote is those bitches they have no talent they just look good and that's how they're getting all these followers and fame but for her she has genuine talent which is true so she's gonna crush all those bitches. That's what that's kind of her like our thought process, right? And she and and, and you, you can't argue with the result. She is like, you know, self-made millionaire, right? And then obviously my friend works with her. Um, she does the R and D for the for the designing of the clothes, and my friend does the sales because my friend likes selling, right? Um, so so um, so my other friend, so I'm into YouTube and entrepreneurship, right? So my other friend, when whenever I'm telling him, I was like, Oh yeah, I'm starting to see some success. And then my friend is like, taking my other friend on a tour on his penthouse suite that he that he lives in my other friend looks so depressed he looks so defeated and then he actually went on a massive tangent rant on my friend and myself and he said to my friend especially my to my friend he's like he's like i don't understand i had to change myself to try to get success and look at you you're just being yourself because he's you know he's like a he's a number four so he's not trying to put like a front right he's just acting like an idiot you know he's an istp mm-hmm. he's like high mm-hmm. friend right he's like acting like an idiot and he's like a millionaire and he's acting like a complete moron, just like having fun, enjoying life. And then like he has like all the success and he didn't have to do any of that, like the stuff that ones would have to do, do like, you know, putting on like an image and all that stuff. He didn't have to do any of that shit. And he got to the, he got to the finish line as like, as, as like, you know, a number one status by being himself. And that's and to, the irony. Yeah. That's to my the friend, irony, isn't it's, like, it? it's blasphemy to my friend. Right. Um, And even for me, like, I'm like, when I was, when I work on my YouTube channel and I'm seeing like some, some success, my friend's like. He, he looks triggered, especially because like, you know, with the ESFJs, their sleep is ST. So it's tied to competence. You know, ours is SF. So for us, mm-hmm. it's popularity and being cool. Mm-hmm. That's like our identity is tied to that, right? Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> when he sees me, it's I, and I don't even think he's threatened by me because of like my YouTube per se. It's the fact that I have skill set that I've built because of the YouTube. Because ST is competence. So I, I have competence and skill set. So I can do video editing. Um, I can I can make videos. I can, um, you know... Um, you know, make, you know, just do a bunch of stuff because of the video related stuff, right? Uh, you know, online marketing, you know, like all that stuff, right? So, so to him, it's not because of the 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 the, the, the subscribers or, or whatever, because I it's like I have a small YouTube channel, it's not that big, but like mm-hmm. it's the fact that I have all the skills, the ST skill set that that he wants because he's, yeah. um, you know, so like but for so example, just to do or, just to do a cross check, it's just to do a cross. So you're number two, right? I, I'm guessing. Um, I think I'm a number two, David Chen when I asked them what my social type is, they said, you're either a four or a two. We don't know. So um, so it's either one or two. I, I think I'm a two because, um, and I, I'll talk, I'll, I'll go over that to you in a second too. Uh, life pile. Because, you know, the life pile is the, the biggest cross check, right? Um, so if you look at my life pile, um, it's true that I've worked in the fitness industry for 10 years, which is specialization if you, if you, if you think about it. But I'm also lead, I'm, I'm blast savior, which is correlated with, um, with specialization so i'm doing it not because i want to but because it's a savior because blast mm-hmm. is a savior so it's a like cognitive rest uh, dissonance right and number two when I, in, in the fitness industry i'm not doing one thing you know like um there's a number three estp and you know him probably in the facebook groups uh, samuel and 
Mm -hmm. number three and he does personal training also and his focus is to make people look good right that's his like specialization Mm -hmm. personal training to make people look good right um for me when i was in when when i work in fitness i do everything i do uh, personal training i teach senior fitness i teach a class for people with osteoporosis i'm a spin instructor i um i am now a yoga instructor too which is weird i actually suck at it because i'm sleep i'm sleep class like people were telling me i teach my yoga class like a spin class um <laughs> which is i'm like okay you know what this is not the right fit but um you know i'm too hyper right and then um so so that's like one of my life piles and then um i i've also been a supervisor in the Can- canadian federal election uh which is actually the the the, the best easiest job i've ever done because i feel like uh, managing people is the easiest that's why i think i'm a number two mm-hmm. um, and then there's also uh, i have i work as a paid travel blogger i have my own travel blog I have a travel YouTube channel and I have a personality YouTube channel. And then I've also started a business in fitness before. So I'm looking at my life pile. I'm like, oh my it's God. It's a lot of spinning plates. It's a lot there's of there's plates. a lot of shit going on here. This is not specialization. This is no freaking way specialization. Um, but so, you definitely do have the friends coin. A hundred percent. Like yeah. I, I, I love my friends and I genuinely want them to succeed. I do not see them as competition whatsoever. I do not see my... Like even That's if my friend, <laughs> if we're even if we're in the same group, like if my friend, so I have two friends that decided to do YouTube, right? Oh my god, I'm so happy! I'm like, oh my god, fellow YouTubers, I, I I don't even see it as like competition. I'm like, oh my god, and we can like for me, it's like we can chat about it. We could talk about like how we can you know improve each other. It's channel. just like. That's just like when people try and lose weight together, like two friends. I yeah. could never do that because what if she loses more weight? Or what if she gets fitter than I am? What if she gets better than, what if she is yeah. better than me? That's, that would be unbearable. Yeah, but for it me, it's like, so oh bad. my God, we can both look good together. We can both oh my, it. oh my God, this is so sweet. And then like, I have a friend who's like, I don't know what type he is, but he might be a one, but like, or two maybe. He invited me to like an all entrepreneur, like, um, social gathering and he's been inviting me like more lately and I talk to other entrepreneurs and stuff and like I can tell some people there are number ones because like when they hear other people succeeding they, they're, they're just like mm-hmm. they're kind of like ah, oh, you know they're like like not yeah. they're like kind of gritting their teeth and stuff but they're just like people like me and other two who's like oh you're doing that wow that's so cool and we're or it's like just inspired right and we're not like even thinking any competition at all we're like oh my god we're here to make friends we're here to um boost each other up to succeed in business we're here to encourage each other learn from each other and and and, and for me i'm like oh this is just so nice you know that, as a, as a you know, friends right you know that like, is nice. so nice i wish i had that i mean that is that must be so le- so much less stressful than i am because i'm always stressing about <laughs> because the, see that's the thing because i'm not deluded because usually when you watch the videos with Shannon and Dave, they would say, oh, he's so deluded. He thinks he's the king of the world because he's the number one. I don't feel like I'm deluded because I know that I won't be the best. But that's but the thing is, I'm pissed off about it. Probably that's probably the, the giveaway, right? Or I'll just try and find a mountain that I can climb where I can be top of the world. So it's just so, for example, with powerlifting, I know that I won't be the best in the open category because the young ones are the young people are much, much better than me. But I can be the best in the 40 plus category, probably, hopefully. <laughs> and but I think so that all oh, that of that sounds really bad. And I, I, I feel like I've sound like a psycho. But I think the positive thing that I have in mind or my my deeper why. So my first why would be, yeah, I want to be the best. But I think the deeper why, why I want to be the best is that I really want to be inspiring. So when it t- comes to powerlifting, I recently did some mindset uh, activities and mindset exercises and where I had to think about what's your why, why are you doing this? And not just to get stronger, but why, why actually, or what's your deep drive? And I was thinking about it and I thought, well, I think my deepest drive is that I want to help shape uh, the way people think, or I want to help shape what people think women can do because that's just, I want to be, inspiring in a way that young people can see oh look what that old woman does and people can actually do women can actually achieve that because women are still seen as the weak sex and um i recently at my latest last comp i lift i deadlifted three times my body weight and i was i'm the first woman first woman in switzerland to ever have done that sweet (laughs) how much did you lift 
185 in kilos. I'm not sure how much in pounds. That let let's let's do. You then you then lifted 185 kilos. Yes, that was. Hang on. Holy shit. 407 in pounds. That is cr that is nuts. At 61. And, and, and you're not you're not like a you're not like a huge muscular woman too. No 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 I'm 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 no that's fine it's uh yeah it's it's a lot of technique let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that is freaking nuts. That is freaking nuts. But I just so my but yes, and that's nice, and it's a fun fact. I, I always whenever there's an introduction round and people have to come up with their fun facts, that's the fun fact that I will come up with. <laughs> um, but I think the the deeper why behind why this is so nice for me is that I feel like this can be an inspiration to other people or other women, seeing oh look if she can do it, maybe I can do it too. And that's, I think that's maybe the positive spin on if I'm a number one and it looks like I am, the positive spin and the 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 um, the, the the deeper positive meaning why why we want to be at the top. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you have a video of that? I want to see it now. Like the... I do. <laughs> yeah, can you send me later? I can. Oh I can. <laughs> yeah. It's not nice though because. Uh, you have to wear that ridiculous singlet, and it's it, oh, it's fine. Ridiculous. I, I, just, I, just, I just yeah, I I just want to see my girlfriend because she also lifts. So my girlfriend, can oh yeah, she can deadlift one hundred nine kilogram at like, and she was like oh, two hundred, at and, and before she was only like one hundred, how much is it? She was one hundred twenty pounds in in weight in body weight, and she was able to do. Uh, that's almost double body weight. That's good. Yeah, it was double. It was literally double. It was double. double. It was, yeah, that's good. Well, that's good. That's, that's yeah, but yours is yours is triple. Numbers. Yours is triple. Right. Yeah, but so, yeah. <laughs> um, double is something to be proud of. That's yeah, that is standard. nuts. Yeah, I can appreciate because I work in the fitness industry, so I really appreciate yeah. when I see that stuff. Um, <laughs> the other thing I appreciate also with women, like because I train females, right? Um, is like my my biggest accomplishment when it comes to as a personal trainer was when I got this one girl, like this Korean girl. She had never lifted in her life, brand new, and then I managed to get her from brand new, and within four months, a full pull up a full pull up full range of motion pull up and and then i was like you're now in the top one percent of, of females and then she that's was like, really proud of herself so i thought that's great like can you, can you probably do a lot of pull-ups right i can yeah how many pull-ups <laughs> can you do i think well, i think my max is 10 but that's, i might be able to yeah but that's that was a good day and i was i was a, a few kilos lighter that helps oh, okay gotcha <laughs> um okay cool oh my god i and um so you do have the flex, right? So what makes you think you're not a number three though? Because like threes also have the flex, right? And you're you, you can argue you're specializing in, in in weightlifting. So like what why why is it like why is it more number one than number three? Because if, if both have flex. Yeah, I I was thinking about that. Um I think again, I compared myself to other threes and I just realized well, first of all, specialize doesn't make sense to me because yeah, you can you can argue the specialize uh, with the um, powerlifting, but I think my powerlifting I don't really identify with it. It's just something I found that I'm pretty good at. So it's maybe it's more like a means to an end. It's a means to I don't know write history or something. <laughs> right. um, plus, what was it? Ah, yeah. What made the difference for me was real responsibility coin because. When I saw Shan talk about number threes, she said, well, all they want is to have a nice, like a stable job, stable income, yeah. um, and to be one cog within the, the bigger company. And that's that's not what I am. Not, no. Um, whenever I get the chance, I want to be the one who makes the decisions, who helps strategize with the company, who wants, I want to be able to see everything and to be able to to shape a company instead of just making a comp contribution within one little cog i that's it maybe i'm seeing myself wrong but i i feel like the number three they are so they feel a lot different for me in a way and then, maybe you have you, maybe you have more cross checks i'm not sure yeah there's one more cross check i think that's a legit co legitimate cross check that you just mentioned there for sure um the last cross check is friendship do you have real friends i don't know what does that mean <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to make you like. I, you know, <laughs> um. Well, I, huh? See, I don't know. But the thing is, I have. I mean, I obviously, I have friends. Um. I only all I know is friends always come after my goals. So, whenever there's a clash, say I want to go and train, and then someone says, 
will you come out for drinks? I will always say no, because I'm training and I can come later because my plan, my, my, my training schedule comes first. I will always sacrifice. And if you don't want to be my friend, if you can't accept that, then that's your loss. I'm going to lose you. Um, so I always feel like the friends, but that's just friends and flex, right? So if I have, do I have friends last? Well, okay, hold on, hold on. Like, well, hmm. Because I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a number two, so I also do what you say. Like, if I have to do work, okay. then I'll, I'll, I'll reschedule my, I'll, I'll put my friends in a different time slot where yeah, I, yeah, I can yeah. hang with them. So it's not like, because um, I'm also goal oriented. I just, I, I'm, what I'm lacking is the, the drive of number ones, right? But like, I'll talk, we'll, we'll discuss about later about the drive. But like, so, um, when I say real friends, it's like you, you think about them, you generally care about them, you, and, and they also care about you, and. Um, you you might have a, like a long history. It's in your life pile. Like for example, um, a lot of my friends, I have friends that I'm I'm like almost forty, and I have friends that I've known since I was ten, or like thirteen. I'm still friends with them to this day. Like I, I have a lot of friends between the age of ten to fifteen years old that I made when I was between ten to fifteen, and I've wow. been friends with them for twenty five years. Twenty five years, still going strong because I know in the finish line, it doesn't matter. That's why I don't want to be like. That's why the, the oh. ones the, the one thing doesn't like appeal to me as much. Like not yeah. not all aspects of one because I was like, you get to the finish line, you have no friends. What are you gonna do? You're like yeah. your life your life sucks, right? Like yes, you're inspiring, but your life. But then you go home, you're alone. You're a loner, right? You know that's so sad. You know, like anyway. So, but like, so that's kind of like my life pile. And then even in college, like, I have I have some friends where like, you know, I'm still friends to this day. I've known them for ten years, and. You know, the friendship just keeps building up. We go to each other's weddings, you know, we go to like, you know, like I'm not married, but like, like but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but you know, it's like, it's like, it's like a thing. There's like community stuff happening. They'll message like, Hey, you know, it's your birthday. Are you going to do something? You know, like stuff like that. So yeah, is, that, is, that. Is, is, is that in your life? You know, like no, you have friends no. in your high school, college or university, anyone? I'm, I'm thinking about, so now it's, I'm, I'm having these flashbacks to my past and a lot of things make sense now because I spent six months um in a, a well abroad doing an exchange year oh, and i made no uh germany so okay oh, i didn't like, 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 I, I knew the like, language it was just I, I was just going I, I went to berlin i just wanted to go to berlin um because <laughs> i thought it, thought it was a cool city um but i never made any friends and i always thought maybe it was because i wasn't a typical exchange student because obviously i knew the language so i wasn't a typical exchange student having to learn the language but also i wasn't one of the the locals so I was always in between and I always thought maybe that was the reason why I made no, absolutely no friends over there I was just always by myself and but maybe now I'm thinking about it maybe that was it might have to do with super demon friends because I was I'm always one of those people who well let's let's put it that, the other way um I'm not one of those people who goes to random people and chats to them. So at the gym, for example, I would never even greet people, but even though I've been seeing them in the gym for years, I would just mind my own business and think, okay, I'm gonna leave you alone if you leave me alone. Um, and while I do have friends, um, I wouldn't say I have many super close friends. I mean, maybe a handful that I really trust but not really, I don't have a lot, like a big cast, wide cast net of friends where I can say, oh, I know people everywhere. And definitely not from my childhood. I don't even think I have even any of the contact details anymore. But then okay. again, I mean, number threes have demon friends too. So that could still be a three, but I just. Oh, but I, I interviewed this lady who's the number three lately and she has two friends. So, and, and, and one of them she sees, once a year and they, uh, twice a year and they take each other out for their birthdays and then the other one uh, she talks to once a month on zoom so she has two okay friends. so it's no, not I definitely have more i have definitely more I, I mean i do go out with friends on a weekend sometimes uh for drinks but i i'm not the one who invites them over to my place or some something like that and i i'm not the one who goes to every party just to see friends and i'm definitely not one who drops their own plans just to see some friends for a party for example um yeah, I don't know. It's the word dropping or rescheduling. Because sometimes I I have a yeah, plan maybe today, yeah. but I'm cool with rescheduling. My if 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 like I mean I I I do the pros and cons obviously. But um, okay. So it sounds like you have definitely demon friends from your description though. Um, that sounds so bad because I am. I feel like I am friendly. You are. I, friendly. I feel You're like I am, but I'm not friends. That's that's the difference, huh? Yeah. 
friendly and friends are not, yeah. not they're not the same, right? Like I'll, I'll give you another example of save your friends. Um, so back in 2016, 2017, I went backpacking for a year. Um, and I was in um I remember I was in Hong Kong and I was in this hostel for just five hours. I was in a hostel for just five hours because I just needed to like sleep and then get out, go back to the airport, right? Because I was fl- taking another flight. And I met this Ukrainian guy there for five hours, five hours, okay? And then he invited me to his country in Ukraine. And 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 literally like eight months later, I show up and I, I've only known him for five hours and I stayed in his place for two weeks. Wow. And and and, and he, was, he wasn't weirded out by it and I wasn't weirded out by it. And that one I can think about that, it's like, this is... Save your friends. friends. Yeah. Yeah. And then I could I think, be uh, I could be in a hostel for five months and not make any friends. Yeah. <laughs> and That's then true. yeah, and then like he's an introvert, so he won't he won't message me. But if I message him, he'll talk to me and stuff, right? So um, so I'm like, and then people think like that's really thick skin for you to message him to go hang out in his place after not talking to him for eight eight months. I'm like, <laughs> you know, for me it's not weird. Maybe because I'm save your friends, I'm like, why is yeah. that weird? You know, and I it is weird for some people because I, I have number one friends who I haven't spoken to in like six years, and sometimes I'll message them and they won't they, they won't reply back to me even though they read my message, and I'm like okay, well I I get where they are because I, I I have a number one friend I still remember back in college, he's like I see my friends as all pieces of shit that's what he told me, I'm gonna beat them and I'm gonna live in a pen, I'm gonna live in a penthouse suite I'm gonna look over the city and I'm gonna it's gonna make me feel like, you know I'm the best you know, wow well, and I'm then, not I'm definitely not that so if that's number one then but maybe I'm so maybe he's is he di or something yeah he's like sleep consumed blood he's play last yeah. he's play last so. so maybe that makes a difference because i do feel very conflicted because i have to de kind i want to be friends with everyone but i at the same time i have this conflict that that hinders me and that makes me um that kind of keeps me from making friends i guess even though i want to be friendly with them and i want them to be happy but not happier than me well i think my friend generally cares about his friends it's just that he can't give them any time because he's too busy yeah. building status. Like he wants to be a lawyer because that's like the highest status job, one of the highest status jobs. So everything he does is all about status and wealth. It's like, it's, it's just like status seeking. And he, but he's not like, he's not like pretentious about it. Cause you know, there are people who are pretentious, but he's like, yeah. that's exactly what his DI wants. He's yeah. like, that's exactly authentic. If he didn't do that, that wouldn't be him. Right. Like, oh, and maybe that's another good cross check that, that actually made me think that I am at number one, because I watched that video at that, that interview with, um, the therapist Maria and where she said um I just want to be the best version of myself I want to be better I want to better myself and I have no my like my bullshit radar is really low or really cranked up for people who don't want to better themselves and I have that too definitely I have I cannot understand how people don't want to get better and work on themselves and really push themselves to the limit and grow and you know you can probably argue that this is responsibility i guess um and the 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 intense drive that i have really it's compared to others i guess but again i mean maybe i'm just seeing myself wrong but i i do feel like i have a very um above average drive i mean even the fact that i'm doing a phd on the side um next to having a regular job um just maybe and i and i'm doing that because i want to be growing my i guess my my skills, my intellect, and my, my maybe even my status a bit because of the doctor title. Um, so, which which comes first? Is it the skill set you're after, or the or or or, or the status? If you're, being I a- always I always half joke, <laughs> and it's it's really just half a joke because it's kind of true. Because I always say I'm doing it because so that someday when someone pisses me off, I can tell them it's oh it's still Doctor Chintia to you. <laughs> That's the real you. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> That will push me through all the the shit that I'm going through with this PhD. It's so there's so much you cannot it's, you cannot imagine how much blast and how much SI you have to do for, to in order to do that. But it's it'll all be worth it if I can tell one person that one day. Doctor Chin said to you. <laughs> I was talking to you. That's so good. I love it. Oh my god, I love it so much. That's so good. That's like your your. It's so your, dumb. That, <laughs> hey, you know what uh, Jordan Peterson said, right? Like motivation is irrational. So, it's true. <laughs> so whatever, whatever the irrational thing is, like you know, I was picturing what a number one is actually because I'm preparing to do um one of the reasons why I'm doing all these interviews right now, like follow up about people's social type is I'm actually gathering information because I want to do um you know those explainer videos I did a long time ago about the animals, like different animals. Mm-hmm. I want to do that for social types, but I want to make sure I'm not full of shit. So I've done my consume, 
right? And I've already pre-blasted like my 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 talking points and stuff. But just to make sure I'm not full of shit, I'm gonna actually talk to people that has specific so social types. So actually, hear from you guys. Um, that's why. So, um, but like I was so I was picturing myself. I was like putting myself in the shoes of each of the individual types. Like what it would be like. Obviously, I, I'm a number two, so it's easy for me to put myself in the shoes of number two. And because I'm Savior Friends, I can also see how um, number fours kind of feel like an act. Um, so I had to put, I really had to put myself in the shoes of the ones and threes because that's like slightly more missing. Um, I think I'm closer to the number ones than than threes though because as a number two, I still have um, the ego flex. It's it's a minor, it's not the biggest demon. It's a minor demon, right? Mm -hmm. So like, for example, I have a travel blog. It's a name after me. So I still have something that's on my name. And I have this YouTube channel, right? Where obviously I'm the person running it. So I still have something in my name. Um, but I was putting myself in the shoes of a number one. And I'm like, if I was a number one, how would I motivate myself? Mm -hmm. Right? And I was thinking about like, because I, I watch um, MMA a lot, like UFC. And mm -hmm. I was thinking about like the number, just like a lot of number ones there, right? And then I'm like, when they're fighting, what are they doing? So what are they doing? Like, And then I think, I think oh, besides getting the, the championship belt, the other thing they want to do is they want to take names, like specifically mm -hmm. take names. So they want to beat people that has a name in the industry to collect in their like list of names that they conquered. You know, it's mm -hmm. basically like a like it's like a totally a one sport, right? He's like, I already beat this person, this person, this person, this person. And they're like, and people, and then the, the analysts, the sports analysts will be like, oh my God, those are all the big names in the industry. And he's versus beating them, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so if I was a YouTuber and I want to use a little bit more number one, because like it's a demon. How would I do it? So for me, it's like, okay, I have to do like a, a kill list then of all the other YouTubers I have to beat, you know? Like I that. guess you'd probably have to define what what mountain you want to climb. Do you want to climb the most views, most subscribers, most valued? Do you want to climb the TE or the, the FE? Um, I'm just a personality space. Right. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I want to be like highly subscribed in the personality space. because mm -hmm. like, But then that's like if I, had, if, if I were to use my one. So I was thinking of like, okay, so if I had to tap into my one, I have to think like a one. And once... The ones are like very decider like they have like decider problems right so for me it, it has to be like i have to make a kill list then i have to put like like the, all the youtubers that's ahead of me and i have to i have to try to beat them subscriber count and when i beat them i put an x on their face and i move the next one because i'm just trying to put myself in the shoes of a like number one right it's like so this is what i have to do then so i was like oh interesting i wonder if i should try it just to see if it like works you know i'm just looking for something because like obviously my, my goal is still friends right but I'm I was like, gonna say, I was gonna say, because ultimately you will be happy if you achieve what the number two achieves, which is really good success, but still having friends, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm so right. if you if you act like a number one and suddenly you're at the top of the mountain and everyone is below you, but you're alone, you would be happy. So why why would you even want to do that? Yes. Oh, but but you can flip the script too, though. Like you can do like what Gary v does. Gary v is like have a chip in your shoulder, but once you get to the top, you help them, right? So yeah, like, that would be like, a good number one. I was yeah. thinking. But I'm not a number one, right? So obviously it's like, I'm like, I wonder if it would work just for as like a social experiment on myself, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, it's just something I was thinking about because like, I'm, I think also I was I'm putting- I'm sure it would. I'm sure it would. I mean, I'm sure it would. It wouldn't make you super crazy happy, but it, I'm sure it would work. I mean, if you suddenly decided to become a number three and specialize in something and become the best in your specialty field, yeah. if you put 10 years of practice into that, it probably would get there too, but it wouldn't make you happy because you want to do more a scattered uh, yeah. thing. And I was also researching number threes because, like I said, you know, ones and threes are my 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 biggest demon. Threes, especially, my, is my biggest demon, right? So I'm putting myself in the shoes of number three, thinking what they're doing. Like yesterday, I was talking to Annie, and then mm -hmm. Annie was telling me about like her honing her craft in um, being this foot massage person, and then also honing her craft when it comes to arts and crafts when she's selling it on Etsy, um, the earring thing, and and she also like I learned so much from her. It's so amazing. It's like. She puts so much craft into the earrings that no one can steal the design because it's it's so hard to steal it. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, isn't that what number ones want? It's like, it's you're yeah. so, because, you know, part of being number one is not just competition. It's also being different, right? You know, like yeah. being, being unique, right? So it's like, if you hone your craft so much that you just stand out so differently from everyone else, you are number one, mm -hmm. you know, you are number yeah. one. You know, in that field, yeah, yeah. Like for example, in basketball, because I watch NBA, yeah. Like there's certain players where they don't go for the most uh, uh, points; they go for the most assists, right? Like passing the ball, and then they are number one in that. And people and everyone do mm -hmm. praise them, and everyone wants mm -hmm. them in their team. And number ones also love them because they're getting assists, obviously, from this person. Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
So I'm like, there's more than one way to become number one. And then, and I think, and I think the, the, the number three figured it out, you know, you know, so. Yeah, that's true. So it's true. That's kind of what I was They realized that they realized that it's better to become number one in your specialty field than trying to climb any mountain ever out there. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's also good what number ones are doing, which is being number one in a more broader area, you know? Yeah. And a more responsible kind of responsible. So so we responsible in a, in a more scattered kind of approach instead of just specializing. Yeah. 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 All right. So Chinzi, I think you are number one. I because maybe probably I, it's I, the only I, one that fits. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, no, it, it makes it makes so much sense. It doesn't fit anywhere. You don't fit anywhere else. Like you're not on number four, um, no. even though you're really friendly. And then um, number two, maybe, but I like that's like the closest. I'm one. not friends. I'm not friends. Like you don't have like it's... yeah, you, you don't have like the real like like even Dave is a number two, right? He has friends from like his early days still, right? Like it's it's yeah. like you know so, um, you know so number three, yeah, maybe not because you have the drive, right? Uh, yeah, I do. So that, that's actually, I think it's the confusion really comes in because I'm a DE double decider, which gives a friend, a friendly spin. Yeah. But then I really feel I'm like number one. So I would be really interested to see more content on conflicting types, because I feel like that's, that's something that's, that would be interesting to explore. I, I, I'm interviewing a number one today. ENF, ah. ENFP also officially typed okay. in David Chan. So oh, I have to watch so, that then. So, so maybe that's another good cross check. She's self, nice. she's, self above, she's self above tribe though. So okay, but that's it's still right. ENFP. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's still yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, cool. so we'll we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, Chinzia, thanks for coming out yeah. and sharing more about yourself. It was so much fun. Thanks and for I, having I, me. And I I absolutely love your your little spiel there about like how you <laughs> like the, the 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 parameters on when you would help someone. Like I absolutely love that. Like it, like that. Yeah. Like and yeah, it sounds you sound like a sociopath, but it's not. It's not. It's 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 fine. I don't think it's a b- big deal, you know. <laughs> I have friends I'm like glad. that. I actually have friends like that, so it's not like it's it's like not a normal thing. So you know, <laughs> it just sounds horrible, but it's it's. It it's, sounds horrible. It it sounds horrible. Yeah. But I I swear I'm not horrible. Yeah. Not <laughs> <laughs> All right. I uh, will wrap it right. up. So take care and. Uh, you too. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. Ciao ciao.